Hey everybody, it's Charles, your hobby hero, coming at you with a jam-packed video today. We're going to be looking at the current Lorcana market, including a recent spike in the Peter Pan Enchanted, as well as suspicions that PSA has graded fake Enchanted cards. But before we get started, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button down in the bottom corner. I do appreciate it. I do put out regular content about the hobbies that I love the most with this channel being dedicated to the Lorcana card game. Now you heard me right. We've got everything covering from the rising and falling prices of some of the cards and sealed products from sets one through three, as well as a huge price explosion with almost an eight times multiplier overnight on the current Peter Pan Enchanted prices, as well as a huge announcement made by a Redditor about PSA grading some fake Enchanted cards. So like I said, just an absolutely jam-packed video. So let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, we'll first start just briefly look at chapter one. Case prices are holding around $1,000, so not a bad price on a sealed case. Really about the same price as buying four boxes. So if you're looking for that number of boxes, you might as well get a sealed case. There's not much of a premium on a sealed case right now, and you're, you know, quote unquote guaranteed at your enchanted hit versus buying individual boxes. Always the, the safer bet to get the sealed case. Elsa is still holding steady around this dollar mark here. I'll be honest, I'm pretty surprised that she hasn't retraced at this point in time. She's been holding steady around there. People are just kind of accepting the fact that she is worth this much and they continue to pay for it. A number of completed listings, as you can see in the 700 plus dollar mark range. And again, I mean, like, this is why people try to manipulate the market is because eventually people just accept that price if it is manipulated long enough. Now people are out there and they are willing to pay this dollar amount. They have consciously made the decision that she is worth, you know, two to three times any of the enchanteds out of set one. And, and they're willing to to pay that. So if you're you're looking to get an Elsa, I don't know that they're going to be coming down anytime soon unless we get word of a reprint. I think there are just few enough of them out there that the supply will never get to a point that demand will decrease enough to drive this back down to the pricing of some of these other Enchanteds. So if this is one that you've got your heart set on, you're probably just as good to pony up at this point in time and purchase one. I talked a little bit about it on the last video that the PSA 10 ones you can get for around $1,500. So it may be safer to just go ahead and buy a PSA 10 one versus gambling on one that could come with surface scratches, ding corners. Uh, something that would still fall into that near mint kind of category. But keep in mind, like near mint by like PSA standards is like a PSA 7. So sometimes it's worth it to buy that extra. I, I usually don't advocate buying PSA 10s, but when the multiplier is really only like 2x, it sometimes can just be more beneficial to go ahead and bite the bullet and buy the graded copy. Though we'll get into some of that here in a bit as well as far as how safe some of those graded copies can be. A lot of these other ones are pretty much in the same spot that they were last time. Troves are slowing down but still on an incline. So one of those troves, I would go ahead and pick them up. I, I don't foresee them retracing. And really, like I said, out of set one, the only place I'd really be a buyer for right now until, you know, either have confirmation on set one prints going out of print entirely would probably be the Aurora here. I think she's got the, the biggest room for improvement. Eventually, all of these cards are going to be power creeped out. So any of these that are holding on to like playability over collectability. I will phase out and then people are going to really be looking at just what they want to collect and you know sleeping beauty being a princess this artwork you know having her castle in the background you know and that iconic imagery like this will be a card that will remain in demand even once all the dust has settled from any of these being even possibly considered 
for any kind of constructed play. Looking at set two, uh, a lot of it's similar. Like I said, we talked about Cinderella last time. She's jumped up again. I think this is one that just, again, the raw prices just don't correctly illustrate what this card is actually going for demand wise like i said her psa 10 ones are going for about the same price as the elsa spirit of winter psa 10s but you can buy her for half the price that you can buy a an elsa so her her psa 10s are almost a four times multiplier whereas elsa's are only a two so just i think these raw prices are starting to kind of catch up with the demand she's really kind of the lone chase out of this set definitely went with some older kind of less popular uh, heroines with alice and snow white in these enchanted spots and then honestly the rest of these ones here are, are really not going to be anything people are going to collect obviously playable wise lady tremaine is very nice but we've not seen playability move the needle on a lot of these uh, Disney 100s are starting to tick up a little bit as well. I do think it'll be a nice sealed product that is finally, you know, starting to disappear from shelves and has its price starting to trend up as well as the Troves down here. Similar, we're starting to see an uptick in their price as they're not showing up in restocks and eventually will just be completely gone from the retail space. And then that leads us into End of the Ink Lands, which has got some big movers here. Uh, Ursula, we talked about last time as her probably going to start to drop off once kind of people realize that, yes, she's an errata, but we're not likely to see a correction of that errata in print. And if we do, it will be a lower print run. So as you can see, you know, her price is starting to tail off considerably. I do do imagine that this will continue to go down now the artwork is fantastic and we've had this artificial kind of glut of purchasers come into the market so i don't imagine she's going to correct all the way back down to her floor i could see her hovering around like the high 200s though or the very very low 300s by the time she kind of starts to settle. But I do think that this downward trend for her is going to continue. So if you're holding on to her just for the purposes of reselling, now's probably going to be the best that you're going to do on her. Barring them coming back and saying, hey, we're going into print three with massive, massive, massive reprints. And the, the cards will be corrected in that print run. Robin Hood de continues to defy reason up here, hanging out in the number two spot for market price, not overall price. Again, I, I don't understand this one. This one's kind of an anomaly. This card is very, very good and highly playable in anything playing steel. But as we've seen from set one with Maui and set two with Lady Tremaine, both cards that just have absolutely populated the meta to a large degree that that has not affected their overall price in set three it seems to be the exception to the rule with robin hood coming in at a very very healthy 200 dollars price tag and again it's not a character that i think many people collect it's certainly not an artwork that i think many people are are striving to to add and it's just been going up ever since it came out again i guess people are trying to bling out their decks i have four of them as a very expensive four of but i guess when you consider the regular legendary is you know taking around the 40 to 50 dollar mark depending on the day of the week maybe they just look at that as might as well bite the bullet on the best version of the card if you're going to spend that much money to get a normal version anyways so that could be part of the reason there a lot of the others have not moved much if anything they've trended down the exception being this guy right here peter pan pirates bane now if you have not been on any of the forums recently to see that this guy is just absolutely flying off the shelves i'm surprised i honestly haven't corrected this on tcg player the picture that they actually have listed is an error print of peter pan as you can see down here they have this extra bracket here at the end of pan that's actually inside the main brackets here for it this is a, a 
an error, much like the Ursula error on the printing. However, unlike the Ursula error, they have already corrected this one. They found this one early in the print run, and they corrected it before all the Peter Pans were printed. So there are some that do not have this error. Once that was kind of discovered and out in the open and that there were two separate versions, the price on Peter Pans absolutely started to skyrocket with the errors on eBay reaching upwards of like $850 on some of the completed listings and people selling them in the forums for six, seven hundred, even offers of nine hundred dollars on some of these printed error versions, which has caused a ton of people to run TCG player and just buy out the Peter Pans that are there in hopes that the versions that they get will be the error versions. I would imagine a bunch of returns are going to be issued claiming that the image that was pictured by TCG player has the error on it which it does. This is actually the picture that they use in the app as well. And then they're going to receive the non-error versions, which are going for their normal market price, which as you can see, was about $110 <laughs> back there on March 8th and has shot all the way up to $250 by the 11th, uh, which is what we're sitting at right now for the lowest purchase price on those. I will say exercise caution with this card. We don't know how many of these Peter Pans are out there with the error, and we do not know how many are out there without the error. And honestly, unless PSA or some of the other big grading card companies start tracking differences between them, there's not ever going to be a great way to find out. We can look at sales history on eBay and see how many of each were sold on eBay. That's kind of our best indicator right now. But we have no idea if it was a very small amount of them that got out. Judging by the number of them that are going up for sale, I I can't imagine that it's all that rare. Now, is it a one-to-one -one split? Is it a you know two to one split or is it a, a really low number? Maybe only like five or six hundred of the Peter Pans with the errors made it out. We we don't know, and I don't know that we will ever know for certain on that. So I would advise caution before you go out and spend eight hundred nine hundred dollars on this, and we find out that it's an error print that's about a 50-50 split on whether it has it or whether it doesn't. But if you do have a Peter Pan, make sure you are paying attention to that before you go and sell it, as that is a tremendous difference in value right now between this Peter Pan and the regular print Peter Pan. Not much else moving here in the way of the Enchanteds. Again, we're just starting to see a steady decline from the initial release prices on these. I would be surprised to see any of these start trending back up anytime soon. Box prices holding steady around that 122 with a lot of completed sold, which is really good. Shows the game is just healthy and still people able to make a profit off of these boxes that they are selling and we're not seeing you know boxes at or below kind of that threshold for a profit margin troves are starting to tick back up they did drop to about retail walmart and a lot of other big box stores started putting them out in mass and got these really basically back down to retail now that those have ran out for easy access they are starting to tick back up again again troves are one of those products that if you can get them while they're at retail or anywhere close to them i advise you to do so because they're always only going to be one print run sealed collectors have established in the past that they they enjoy collecting these because they are limited to one print run so there's always going to be a demand for them uh, and as you can see, kind of the price disparity between that and the collector's boxes, which are basically still at retail. So not a bad pickup. If you find one at Target, you know, you can grab one. They are fun to open. I opened one of mine just to get the box that we use for storage and the stuff inside. Because honestly, that stuff <laughs> sells for about $15 to $20 online by itself anyway. So we might as well get a crack of the eight packs out of it and keep those boxes and accessories for the rest of that. 
Now on to something that may actually shake up the Enchanted market pricing even more, and that is that there have been claims that PSA has genuinely graded fake lore Kana cards. Now this was posted yesterday and by Key Lime Pyro. And his context was I was looking at some recently sold cards, saw one that was graded, but I could tell it was a fake card because of the shiny text at the bottom. I thought someone was creating a fake graded card holder, which I have seen those before in his defense. Uh, but I looked it up on the site and could see clear as day that the card was fake from PSA's site. All of the images in this gallery are from PSA's website directly. You can see at the bottom that the cards have reflective properties on the text that is supposed to be only white. Now, I do want to put an asterisk right here. I, there have been multiple claims of people who have opened theirs personally and had foiling at the bottom. That is not super uncommon for something to be seen like in some print runs having the entire surface being foiled and in other parts of the print run pieces of the print being unfoiled so that alone i don't think necessarily causes for concern uh, which a number of people if you go and you find this reddit article will will dispute that as well so just just keep that in mind uh, the second obvious indicator uh, is that you can also see that the little artist symbol is closed at the end instead of open as described in a different Reddit article. I'm just concerned for people who think they are buying real cards because they've been graded. It's not the failsafe I thought it was, at least no clue when these cards were graded, but has at least a Series 2 in there and they are actively being sold. So please be cautious. So originally reading this, I was a little skeptical. He does include pictures of the cards here. Now, he mentions that these images are directly from PSA's site. And these look pretty much like the scanned versions of the cards that I have. Again, the only difference really being that I don't currently have any that have been submitted that have had the foiling in the letterbox down at the bottom. But for the most part, these all look pretty comparable. Now, the scanners don't do them any favors. And I'll throw up some, you know, legit cards that, you know, I have owned personally and submitted to get graded. So you can kind of see this side by side comparison on these but there's nothing really alarming from the scans that jump out to me as as fake now there are some red flags on here just from a kind of statistical analysis of this submission and that's first and foremost that these all came from the same submission as you can see these numbers, while not listed sequentially, are all right in that same parameter of submissions, which for one person to make a submission this size isn't necessarily a red flag by itself, but the fact that all of the Enchanteds that he is submitting have a lot of similarities, one being that they do all do have that foiling in the bottom. Now, as I said, I have not opened it, and many people have attested that they have opened one or multiple ones personally that have had the foiling down here, but for an entire submission from one individual to all have foiling down in the names uh, section of these cards is pretty difficult for me to believe happened coincidentally like I, as many of them as i have opened i have not opened any with that so for this person to have a full submission of this size with all of them like that does lend itself to some questions for sure the other part being the grades on these cards there are very i don't know if there's a 10 in this submission lots of sevens in this submissions uh and eights again and a submission this size with this many valuable cards in it 
you would just assume that the person submitting them knew a little bit about the conditions of the cards. Uh, with the ones I have submitted, I think I've gotten one back that wasn't a 10. Now, granted, I do try to make sure that I don't submit ones that don't have a shot at 10. And I do know a little bit about the actual grading process. So it could just be somebody who went out and really likes Disney and purchased a bunch of these and just sent them all in, didn't you know go through any checks, didn't wipe them down. And it could just be fingerprint smudges and stuff like that that affected the grade or it's possible that whoever graded these noticed some of these surface inconsistencies from them being fake cards. And those were the things that got the grade knocked down. I've seen a number of fake cards that were purchased and seen like high resolution images of those cards. And there are definitely some subtle like cracks and bends and silvering that are in those cards that you don't see in the normal versions of the Enchanted. So that's possibly what could be causing the lower grades just kind of across the board on all of these as well. The third thing though, and probably the most damaging is that PSA has already deactivated all of these cert numbers. Every single one of them from this Reddit post has been intentionally deactivated per PSA, which to me says that they're either trying to get ahead of it while they are investigating it by shutting these down to reduce I don't know, traffic, I guess, to these, or at least pause their ability to be sold until they're through with it, or when they were reviewing either their scans or their graders notes that there was enough cause there that they have deactivated. Now they have not listed any reason on there. PSA will actually go back in and list things as either, you know, a fraudulent card, etc. Once that has been decided, they will go back and update that cert number. They haven't done that yet, but they if you go and you put in any of these cert numbers, and I'll put the screen up here for you to show you one of them. They have deactivated all of them at this point in time that were mentioned in this Reddit. So that if you go and you run any from this order, I would imagine if you see one on eBay for sold or anything like that, it will kick back to this. So there you guys have it, some market updates as well as some explanation behind why the current Peter Pan prices have skyrocketed like they have. So make sure you're on the lookout for that extra little errata on his card. And then we'll see if PSA makes an official announcement on those cards. Right now, it's kind of looking like a buyer beware kind of situation. Make sure you're checking those cert numbers to see if there is any additional information that's out there. But once you get those cards in hand too, make sure you are examining those cards for any telltale signs that the graders may have missed. If you guys have any questions or comments, as always, leave them down in the comment section below. And until next time, guys, Hobby Hero, out.